Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is doing some great things here this morning. We have been studying on the way. Praise God. Praise God. The way of following Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. I love you all and all of you all out there. We need your financial support here in New Life Church Center. If you do not have a church home, I invite you all here. 9825 Lamartine Drive, Port Richie, Florida, 34668. Come on out here. I'm pastor of this church, and I will pray for you and love you and, and show you how to implement the Word of God into your life on a consistent basis. And that if you want to become a part of this church, God is a God who owns the tithe. <laughs> so if you, you want to uh, bring your tithe, pay your tithe to this local ministry, God will receive it and he'll put it into the kingdom. And God says in his word that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And the seed that you have planted, it shall not be torn up before it's time. Gl glory to God. You know, if you want to financially give on a consistent basis into this ministry, financially giving, that means giving, constantly giving, constantly giving, God will receive it. Do not make the check out to me. Do not make any money orders out to me. Do not send me any money in. Do not send me any uh, cash in the mail. That is not smart. Do not do that. But send send a month pay check of money order to New Life Christian Center or NLCC. God promises you that he, your money will go into the kingdom to the use of this ministry. To the use of this ministry. And God promises you that he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But come on out here so that we can continue to teach people and teach you and teach you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God is a great God. He's a wonderful God. But at the same time, God is also a just God. People might say, well, I love God. You don't know my heart. No, you're right. You're right. I don't know your heart, but God does. You might be a believer in Christ Jesus, but God may love you, but that don't necessarily mean he pleads with your actions. So that is why it's so important to follow, to learn, to be taught how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. Everybody in this room already who's been coming here on a consistent basis, you know we teach this on a consistent basis all the time. All the time, all the time. And I, my goal is to reach and teach me, as many people as I possibly can before Jesus get us up on our body here. Glory to God. Plus, I don't want to see you dying up going to hell. And that is, that is not my desire. Uh, my, my desire is becoming more and more and more to seek and to save that which is lost. If you die and you go to hell, that is not a prosperous life. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care what kind of clothes you think you get. I don't care how many women or men that you just slept with. That's irrelevant. If you die and you go to hell, you are not prosperous in this life. You are not prosperous. So, come on out here. I love you all. Let's get right on into the Word of God. The last few weeks, we have been teaching on getting our needs met. And last week, we left off uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want you all to turn your Bible to the book of John. To the book of John. We've been teaching on the need to receive the Holy Spirit. No, no, we're going to go to the book of John. We're going we're gonna to go back where we left off last week. It's just one, one book over. Go to the book of Acts. Go to the book of Acts. Book of and we're going to reread what we left off last week. We left off last week. Woo! Glory to God. We left off here. Look what it says. We're going to read. We're going to just read it. Um, verse 6. Nope. Verse 3. 
<laughs> verse 3. Chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. I, see, I, I, I was kind of anxious to get to that new ground. <laughs> I was trying to anxious to get to that new ground. I, 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 because I'm, I'm excited about this, man. Uh, more and more people are walking through life and they have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence speaking in tongues. And, uh, and that is one of God's promises to us that we should receive the Holy Spirit. That's, that's a promise to us. And we're going to read this promise. Watch this. Verse 3. To whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many fallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. These are hung around forty more days after he rose from the dead. So a lot of people don't even know that, but you know that now. Look what it says. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He said, that's the promise, a promise to you. That's a <laughs> promise to you. See, y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. That's a promise to you. It's something that it, it, he, the Holy Spirit is something, but he is something, or he is the guide that you need while you live in this earth. We have found out here recently, uh, we're going to go here, we're going to go look at one of the prerequisites of receiving the Holy Spirit. You got to be born again first. You have to be born again first to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit already is on the inside of you. But you need the Holy Spirit on you. I want you to use your I want you to use your imagination. Do you think it is possible for you to heal people? See, one person say no. Some people in the room are looking at me like, they're like, I don't know if I should answer that question or not. <laughs> Praise God. Okay? Think about it. You can't heal nobody. Even all the old prophets up under the old covenant who did heal people, the Holy Spirit was on them. At the time, uh, up under the old covenant, the only people that could receive the Holy Spirit these are the main three people that can receive the Holy Spirit. It was a prophet. Y'all hear me? Or a king. And who, who, else, who somebody, somebody else knows the other one. Or it was a, a prophet or a king. Or it was as the Spirit of God wills it. When he, knew, when he saw that it was necessary. But a regular person on a consistent basis did not receive the Holy Spirit. Only prophets and king, uh, priests, I'm sorry, prophets, Priest. kings, and priests. And there was a fourth one, which is the people who had, uh, what they, when they, it was as the Spirit of God, you need to be baptized through the Holy Spirit at that time. But at the time, nobody could speak in other tongues. One of the illustrations, one of the illustrations was King Saul. Bible says when he got anointed, that the, that uh, that the, he his heart was transformed. That he had another spirit. He he, he, he had a, a different he had a different mindset. Um, we found out that um, Caleb, some while back, Caleb had another spirit. The Bible calls the lowercase spirit, which he had a different attitude. Which we know that that's not the Holy Spirit. And think about. It. Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the head priest. He was the head priest at the time when Jesus was going to be crucified. And he made some big statement. And he's John so he said, It is good for one man to die than a whole nation of people. Bible said he said that not knowing what he had said. For he was high priest. That year, what was going 
going on? The Spirit of God came on him just for the purpose of saying that statement so Jesus can be crucified to take the weight of sin of a whole nation of people. And we know he was the one, he was the main ringleader to get Jesus crucified. So we know that he wasn't obeying, following Jesus Christ faithfully, holy and holy. We know that already. So what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Some people get so caught up in the tongues part. And, and, and that the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us that tongues shall pass away. Jesus said to him, he said, tongues shall pass away, but my word will not. So he said, heaven and earth and tongues shall pass away. So what is Jesus getting at? Let's go find out what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is. Well, look what it says. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? What did Jesus say? And then they said, Jesus, will you please send us back on top now? What did Jesus say? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. It's not for you to know that right now. But what did he say? But ye shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Uh, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the othermost part of the earth. What did Jesus just say? The purpose of the Holy Spirit for? Him? What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The power. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The power. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The power. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The power. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The power. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? To receive power. Did you see anything in scripture where he says the purpose of the Holy Spirit is for you to receive tongues? You shall receive power. Power. We find, we, we look up the word power. Let's go back up to verse 7. Look what it says. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own what? Power. But now you receive this other word power. Don't think of these two word powers by being the same power. There is uh, an ability power, authority, I mean, uh, uh, authority power, and then there's ability power. There's authoritative power. Just say like using uh, our government is concerned. We have given because of the majority of the people voted for our president, Barack Obama. We have given him the authority to be Master Chief. Oh, I'm sorry, not Master Chief. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a cut of a video game. We have given him the authority to be the head man in charge or the, the, um, the chief of our military. He has that power. We have given him the power to be not a dictator but an illustrator of what Congress does. I want you to follow me on that. We've given him the authority. What did you, Jesus just say? It is not for you to know. It is not for you to know. The, the, uh, the what was in God's authority. God will set people back up on high. Set the world back up on high eventually. It's not going to happen yet. Because if it has happened, it would already be happening. Jesus would be here, and we wouldn't be going through life that we're going through. Waking up every day. Somebody killed somebody over here. Waking up every, uh, going to bed every other night. Somebody, uh, somebody raped somebody over here. Some child got molested over here. 
Somebody scammed some kind of money out of somebody's bank account and took millions and fled to the Cayman Islands. You know, we, if, if that's God, I don't want to have no part of heaven. I don't want to have no part of heaven at all if that's God. So we know that that's not God because God says, I come to give you peace. I've come to give you, I, he said, he came to bring a sword to set those apart. If you want to be, it's like we, we have a correction of facility system right now that ain't working anymore. People who want to be about a law abiding citizens, they get to live in society. But people who don't, who break the law, when you get caught, you get put away in a whole other system. That's the way it's going to be when, when, when the new kingdom come around. People who wanted to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord, they're going to go be with Jesus Christ. And those who don't, they're going to go be with Lucifer, burning in the lake of fire. That's the way it is. People, some people, some people don't, people don't want to, they, they don't want to go down that road because they don't know too much about it. And they, they say it causes too much controversy. And I'm, you know, if this, if, when I'm teaching, been teaching them about the Holy Spirit, if you still think it's controversy, that means you ain't fully accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord. At the same time, you still have a You might be born again, but you still in doubt about the Holy Spirit. Jesus just said, there's an authoritative power, but then when he gets to the Holy Spirit in verse 8, he says there's an ability power. This ability prompts you and pushes you to be able to have that anointing or have the ability to heal people. To get things done. Glory! Man! That's what I've been needing in my life. I need ability. I need something that, or I need someone that's going to help me get these things done in my life. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. He's a helper. Now, let's go over to, now we go back, we go, oh, go into the book of John. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Watch this. Look at verse. Here we go. I need to get things done in my life. I need the Holy Spirit, man. That's why it's so important. The need for the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to get things done. I need. We need th things done in our lives. And some of us are walking through life, and we walking through life aimlessly, and we ain't really getting nothing done. And, I, and the God has sent us the promise of the Holy Spirit to get these things done in our life. Look what it says. Verses uh, 15, 14. Look what it says. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will what? Do it. Do it. I'll do it. You ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Well, I asked God, and he ain't did it yet. See? You, you already doubt. You went into the whole thing doubting. You went into the whole thing in unbelief. You, you, you trying to ask God to give you more money so you can go buy some more cigarettes. You asking God for some more money so you can um, be able to live on a high horse and not have to work. You asking God for more things so, so you can live a lavish luxury life. You have, and, and especially the, the, the area that I we're in now, it seems like more and more people are asking for more and more money so they can go buy another tattoo. Huh. Wasted money. I need another ear piercing, another face piercing. I oh, We did this one for free. Okay, really? That's crazy. M mutilating your body. I got tattoos too. But there comes a time where there's one or two tattoos. You know, you can't find in the Bible where it says, Thou shalt not have a tattoo. It's not in there. You know what the Bible says in the book of Leviticus that you should not mutilate your body. Yeah, the Bible do do that. But those people, they were putting, they were drawing other gods on their body. Yeah, you know, ain't no wrong with Mickey Mouse. If you put a tattoo of Mickey Mouse on you, you want to put a tattoo of Mickey Mouse on your body, go right on the head. But I, I don't, I, you know, I, I, you know, I got tattooed. Me and my wife, we got our names tattooed on our wheels. Married what five years at the time, 
And for our fifth anniversary, we got a tattoo that says, Ivory loves Denise. And her tattoo says, Denise loves Ivory. Praise God. But that was, that was a whole lot of years ago. A whole, whole lot of years ago. So, if you want, but if you go get a tattoo with a bone skull, with a pitchfork coming up out of it, and some <laughs> demon coming off of it, talking about, yeah, you know, it's something wrong with you. We, we need to cast. That's Satan playing with your brain. Why did I even go down that road? Try to get things done, man. If you ask, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Somebody needed to hear that, though. If you love me, keep my commandments. Here you go. Here you go. This is a, this is a sign of a Christian. Not somebody who just took the title Christianity. Or they got born. I believe in Jesus Christ, so I'm a Christian, too. No, what did you say? If you love me, keep my commandments. If you say you love me, obey me. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not commit adultery. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Don't have sex with somebody you ain't married to. If you love me, keep my commandments. Obey. 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 I thought we were talking about the promise of the Holy Spirit. It is. We are. We still are. I promise you we are. Because once you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, his first and foremost job in helping you get things done in this life is to live holy. Oh, <laughs> how, how do I know that? Look what he says. If you love me, keep my commandments. What's one of the, what did I just say that one of the first and foremost jobs of the Holy Spirit is to help you do what? Live holy. Watch. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit's job is to help you live righteous. You are already are righteous because you got born again. You are as righteous as you'll ever be in your spirit, man, because you got born again. You cannot, unless you reject Jesus Christ, you cannot, the Holy Spirit is not going to just it come out of you one day. You know, I don't want to be in ivory no more. I'm leaving. I'm gone. Peace. Holler at you. He's not going to do that. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So he knows how to be in your spirit, man, and just be in there. But it never affect your surroundings. He never affect your thinking. He'll never affect what, or what you do with this physical body. The decisions you got to make. Hey, y'all need to wake up. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is he's in you, but he'll never change anything around you. He will not be a helper. There you go. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. How do I know we talk about the Holy Spirit? Watch this. The, uh, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither know of him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. This is one of the prerequisites of, to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the prerequisite is that you must be born again. How do I know? He says, the world don't know who he is, but you do. Didn't we just read, didn't we just read uh, last week about some people who was uh, in the book of Acts, who they had gotten born again, but they never even heard about the Holy Spirit? They never even heard about the Holy Spirit. Never even heard about the Holy Spirit. The world don't know who the Holy Spirit is because he's not even in them. They ain't never received Jesus Christ as their Lord. That's how the whole, when you get born again, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord, that's how the Holy Spirit come on inside of you. He in you now. Watch this. Watch this. He said, but you know him, for he, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be where? In you. Drop all the way down. Or drop all the way down. Look at verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. I'm, Jesus says, I'm with you right now. I'm limited in what I can do with you right now. Because I'm only one person. I may be Jesus, but I cannot be with you 
24 hours, 7 days a week. You can read countless times throughout scripture when Jesus was somewhere over here and other people were over there and Jesus wasn't with them. Jesus would be in his house. Yes, Jesus in his house. And Jesus would wake up right before breakfast, ready to eat something, open up his front door, probably finna go out there and get the Jerusalem paper. <laughs> and he'd see all these folk out in his front door ready to hear the word. Or supposed to hear the word. Come on, people. He could not be everywhere. That's why he says, These things I have spoken, yet present with you. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, that's pretty cool right here. The Holy Spirit will be with you. Yes, he is with you, but we're talking about receiving the Holy Spirit where? On you. Go back to the book of Acts. Go back to the book of Acts. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? To bring or, or give, bringing power and giving you power to get things done in the earth. To get things done in the earth. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. To help you get things done in the earth. Y'all hear me out there. Don't touch that dial. You need the Holy Spirit. He's on you. He's already in you if you receive Jesus Christ your Lord. But you need him on you. You need him on you. You need him on you. Why? To get things done. So many people, because Jesus said it over in the book of Mark. Over in the book of Mark chapter 16. He says this. He said, he said you'll be able to cast out demons. He said, you'll be able to take up anything, dead thing, and it should, by no means shall not hurt you. He said, he'll be with you always even to the end of the earth. He'll be with you when you go out there preaching the gospel. Now I don't mean you're supposed to go out there and pick up a snake and then try to say, look, I got the Holy Ghost. That snake bites you, you that's yeah. your fault. You got to be a little smarter than that. I mean, foolish, end up in a dog on uh, um, uh, Bay Morton Hospital. They give you um, uh, snake venom, the, uh, the, the, the medicine for it, to get the venom of my body, the antidote. That's crazy. That's just dumb. But you can get things done in the earth. You'll be, a bit, you'll be able to be that successful man or woman of God while you're in the earth. You'll be... What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say over there uh, in Acts? What did he say? We already read it. Flip back over to Acts chapter 1. You already there. Verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You'll be able to be that witness, not just go witnessing. You'll have the power on your side, backing you, getting things done. Glory to God, man. And so many people get caught up in the tongues part. I don't know. No. How do you know that the, the evidence of you receiving the Holy Spirit is tongues? Okay. Acts chapter 2. Watch this. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. We read this already. Look at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there, un there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as fire, and it set upon them. In a few minutes, I'm going to give an invitation to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm always giving an invitation to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then when you do, when I'm going to be just like Paul did in Acts chapter 19, Paul ministered to a group of people, and then he laid his hands, oh, hold on, bro, he laid his hands on them. When he laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost is going to fall on that person. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the invitation to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then when you come up here, 
and I'm going to pray for you. We're going to pray. You're going to ask for the Holy Spirit. You're going to ask for the Holy Spirit. I'm going to lay hands on you and the Holy Spirit himself. You won't be able to see him. And some of you all, if you do see him, that's just because the Spirit of God revealed yeah. that, 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 that event happening to you. But me personally, as many people as I've ever laid hands on to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I ain't never saw no cloven tongue fall on nobody. But I know it's I know it's I know that's what's happening. Why? Because that's what just happened here. Look what it says. It says, I mean, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and it set upon each of them. Now look what happens when the Holy Spirit sets on you. And they, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Say dog. dog. Ain't nobody saying. Say dog. dog. Say cat. cat. Say boy. boy. Say girl. girl. Who's giving you those words to say? I. No, you ain't. I just told you to say them. I'm not gonna say over here talking about say I, 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 I you ain't come up with the words. Say boy, say girl, say cat, say dog, say chair, say breath of life, say new life Christian center, say new life Christian center. Who's giving you the words to say? I am. I am feeding you these words. I am feeding you those words to say these words. So guess what's gonna happen? When the Holy Spirit comes on you, what does the Bible say? You'll begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave, will give you utterance. If you look up the word utterance, the word utterance means words to say. When I lay hands on you, when I lay hands on you, the Holy Spirit is going to fall on you and you hear words that the Spirit of God on the inside of you is going to give you to say. Here's the kicker. You won't understand them though. Your job is just to say them. You better hear me. Your job is just to say them. How do I know that? Hold your finger there. Go to the book. Hold your finger there. Go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 14. Look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. I'm going to give the invitation here. Because the God's whole purpose for you to receive the Holy Spirit is why? It's for why? It's why? It's why? Not it's why? It's for why? It's for what purpose? To receive, to receive power so you can get things done while you're in the earth. Doing it in God's power. Remember in the book of Job, it says not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You'll be able to get things done in the earth by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by your own weak, frail power. That's why so many people are weak. That's why so many people struggle. That's why so many people find way and they find you're going to get physically tired because you're in the physical body. You are. Well, you're going to sit down and you're going to need some rest. But as you guys, you go through your life with the Spirit of God in you and on you, and use you, you're using the power that God has given you, you'll be accomplishing things, and then you'll look back and you'll be like, man, I got all that accomplished by the Spirit of God, because He's there to assist you, and you leaning on Him, and you trusting in the Lord. And you trusting in the Lord, and you lean on lean not unto your own understanding. 
Don't look at ways that seems right to you. And you can lean on God. And you'll be getting things done. And things will be happening. And you'll be like, praise God. Praise God. And it'll be God doing it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit. You'll be doing it. You're the one be physically with the arm reaching out and the leg reaching out. And the mind. Come, the, it seems like your mind is coming up with But you lean on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, it, his arm will be reaching out, reaching out through your arm. Oh, glory. You'll be taking the right foot step and the left foot step. And that'll be the Holy Ghost leg reaching out and stepping out with you. But when the Holy Spirit falls on you, you'll begin, the Holy Spirit is going to give you words to say, but you won't understand them. And God just wants you to have peace when you when this happens. So he puts this in the Bible. Verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. I don't need to be speaking no mystery. I don't understand what no mystery is. Does your Bible uh, have any other kind of words in there? What it says hidden or uh, what it's kind of it speak of mysteries. Does your Bible say anything else? Hidden truth. Hidden truth. Hidden truth. You'll be able to speak the hidden truth. Remember what we found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2? The Bible says we speak these things in a mystery, a hidden truth. God trying to get your needs met, and he's trying to tell you he's already provided it for you. Come on, people. God, my mother Bible say he has already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already given it to us. He's given it to us by his spirit. And God wants, the whole key thing is that for you, God wants you to be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, so you can start speaking those things that he's already provided for you. Y'all did not get it. You did not get it. I'm going to repeat it again. God wants you to start, oh, glory to, I'm going to go read it. First Corinthians chapter 2, First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 5. Verse 5. Look what it says. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Go to work real hard. Work real, real hard and you might make ends meet. Go to work. Real work. You work hard, hard. We work harder. Work harder, work faster. Work harder, work faster. Work harder, work faster. And you might. Make a dollar. I mean, y'all may heard you say that stupid. Uh, what what is that, the, the dumb statement today? Eight hours a day, make a dollar. Oh, uh, what? How do you say it? How we say? It? How do you say it for years? What did it say? Another day, another dollar. Another day's work, another dollar made. What? That ain't God. That ain't God. Look what it says. How be it? Verse six. How be it? We speak the wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of the world, nor the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom of God, which, which of God ordained before the world unto our glory. God says, I've already provided the thing for you, but I'm trying to get you to speak them. And how does he get us to speak them? Through tongues. Glory to God. Glory. God not only gives you the power to get the things done in the earth, but in one quick swoop, he helps to change your tongue. Doesn't the Bible say life and death is in the power of the tongue? Our tongues have been so used to cussing folk out, talking crazy, Manipulating, blah, blah, lying. I had somebody the other day tell me they, I need to lie for them. I ain't lying for you. I love you, but I ain't lying for you. But if you don't lie, it's going to mess up my life. That's between yo, you, and whatever. I ain't going to lie for you. I know that's right. I'm going to lie for you. Oh, 
we pick up the phone, ring, ring, and we tell our children to answer the phone, tell whoever it is I'm not here. Now you teaching your child a lie. Or you pick up the phone, Ivory, is Denise Robinson there? Uh, yeah, she here, hold on one second. Tell them, tell them I'm busy. You ain't busy, you standing right next to me. I mean, I love you, wife, but I'm not for lying. No, me and my wife, no, I'm just, you use that example because I know she going to get mad at me. Example, y'all, y'all out there talking about, nah, he, she, his wife be trying to get him live. I ain't finna be lying. But God is trying to help you get your tongue under control so that you can start speaking these things that he's already provided for you. God is trying to bless us every which way. But some of us who receive, who, re, who rebuke, and, oh, I mean, not, I mean, reject the Spirit of God. You also rejecting tongues, which means you're also rejecting those things that he's already provided for you. Because he's trying to get you to bring them to life. Think about it. Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24. 23, 24, 25. <laughs> all, them, all them verses. He says, whatsoever you say, it shall come to pass. And Jesus backs it up. Jesus says, therefore I say, whatsoever you say. It's going to come to pass. Why? Because he wants the things to come into your life. He wants them to come into your life. But you refuse to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You refuse to. You refuse the power to get the thing done in the, in the earth. Think about it. Over in Deuteronomy. Spirit of God bringing this to my memory right now. Over in Deuteronomy. What did he say? He says, remember the Lord that God, for it is he that giveth thee what? Power to get wealth. God says, I'm giving you the power to go get it. I'm giving you the power to go get it. But a lot of people try to bypass the Spirit of God and go get it themselves, and it ends up corrupting them. That's why you see husbands and wives after so many years. Married for 40, 30, 40 years, and they end up in divorce. Because they went out and tried to get the money to try to provide for their family, and all of a sudden, now they're struggling. Read it. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch this. Almost through here. Almost through here. Look what it says this. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Drop all the way down. Verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesied edifies the church. What does Jesus say? Did, if you prophesy, prophecy in this instance is talking about teaching. If you if you stand up and you teach, you edify just like me, I'm going to edify all of you all. But when I speak in tongues, who am I edifying? Me. Father God, I believe I receive. I believe I receive what I just spoke. I may not understand it, but I believe I receive it. Look what it says. Drop all the way down to verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayer, but my understanding is unfruitful. God is telling you right now, you're going to be speaking these words that the Spirit of God is going to give you but you're not going to understand them. What is God trying to do? He's trying to get you to speak those things that he's already provided for you. And if you believe you receive them, you have them. Even though you don't understand it. Oh, glory to God. God is trying to get us blessed even by tricking our own mind. Because we're we so smart, we think we got to figure everything out. And God is saying, I, I've, given you this, I've given you my power. I've given you the ability. I've given you the spirit of God. I've given you all things that pertain to life of God. But you keep rejecting it. You keep rejecting it. How much longer are we going to reject these things that God has given us? How much longer? I, I, I leave you with that question. How much longer? I'm confessing by faith right now that you're not going to uh, take much longer and keep rejecting the Spirit of God.
because it's more. You, you understand. You understand now. If you reject the Spirit of God, I told you all last week, I refuse to believe that it's just you saying, I don't want that stuff. You got clear-cut understanding today. You got clear-cut understanding. If you reject the Spirit of God from this day forward, you have been totally been manipulated by Satan himself. How do I know that? Uh, uh, last, last, last chapter, last verse. I got 30 seconds. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Watch this. First, first, first 2. Watch this. It says this. But we speak the wisdom of God. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom of which, I mean, even hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. It's unto our benefit. Watch this. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They would not have crucified Jesus. If you, if you do not want to receive from this moment on, the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence speaking in tongues, Satan has really, really done a number on your brain. I'm, I, I re, if, if it's you saying, I refuse that stuff, that's you. That's between you and God. And guess what? God says, you'll go without me. You'll go without my wisdom. You'll go without my understanding. Why? Because you have rejected me. I told you all last week, it was to, if you, people at that time who rejected Jesus Christ, when he was with them, it's the same thing if you reject the Holy Spirit now. And God says, I'm trying to get things done in your life. You've been wanting things to happen. You've been praying and you've been believing. And you've been, so you've been trying to do right. And you've been da 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 And he says, I've given you, given this, given this attitude, this, I've given you the whole way of thinking for you. And if you reject him now, Satan has done a number on your brain. Because Satan has figured it out. He's figured it out. I ain't the first one to preach this message. There are many, many other men and women of God out there in the world who has preached this same message. And Satan says, I need to keep deceiving them. I need to keep, keep getting them believe. No, you don't need that at this time. You got to do it when you ready. You don't need that right now. All right, keep, keep getting deceived. And God says, you'll go without me. You'll be born again. You'll die. You'll come on me with me. But you'll go without me in the earth. I love y'all. Do not reject the Spirit of God. So all of you all right now in this room right now who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're going to cut this camera off. And when we cut this camera off, we're going to believe that you received the Holy Spirit. Just raise your hand. Let the Spirit of God unction you. He's going to unction you to raise your hand. You just raise your hand. And we're going to pray for you. And we're going to pray with you. And we're going to lead you in a prayer to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or even to just get born again. On the front end. Get born again first. And if you're already born again, it's time to take that next step. Hey, all of you all out there, New Life Christian Center, come on out here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. clock time. Come on out here so that we can show you and teach you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. See y'all next time.